let's uh, talk to Amit Kalyani about whether this sets the uh, tr uh, sets the trend of sorts of what the rest of FY23 has to bring. I mean, good having you. Thanks for joining in. Hope all is well. Yeah, Neeraj. Hi. Good to see you. So, uh, so yeah, it's been a satisfying quarter. I think our numbers have been pretty decent. Um, basically, what has worked out well for the company is the fact that our export numbers have been good, uh, largely driven by uh, the Pascal side growth. Uh, and uh, which which has you know hit a new record exports also at the highest level that we've had so far and we are seeing tremendous traction from uh, new markets new customers and also from existing customers for new products and from new geographies uh, on the flips on the second side i'm also happy to report that we've won more than 350 crores of business uh, from india in the quarter from automotive and industrial uh, and uh, now aerospace has become more than 10% of our industrial business uh, export wise. So this was 2% last year. So as we mentioned that we now have a very solid strategy in place for aerospace. We have multiple established and growing customers and we've also added two new customers this quarter. So we are on a solid growth trajectory for those businesses. Um, we have also concluded the JSA acquisition uh, in July and it will become uh, part of our consolidated numbers from this quarter onwards and it will be earnings accretive. Um, additionally, our balance sheet continues to remain uh, robust with a, a debt equity uh, net of cash at 0.2, net debt divided by equity which is below 1, it's 0.75. And we believe that in this volatile environment, especially with winter coming and, you know, the energy situation in Europe being what it is, uh, you know, it's good to be financially strong, secure, and have multiple fronts from which there can be stability and growth. Um, our European operations were stable uh, in spite of the very high price increases. As you're aware, energy rates in Europe are now in excess of 40 euro cents per kilowatt hour, which is 5x of what it was last year. Um, but we are managing, we are managing, we're dealing with it, you know, systematically working with our customers and, uh, you know, getting whatever we can. Um, I'd like to comment on our US operations. The green plant that we have built is a start, has started production. It is in a establishment and ramp up phase as you can understand with a brand new plant you know brand new manpower in a new location it does take a few quarters so we should look at uh, towards the end of the year for this to stabilize and you know start uh, becoming uh, you know break even to a positive on the ebitda level right now we're at making about between 3 and 4 million ebitda loss a quarter but that's because we are charging everything off to uh, pnl and not capitalizing anything and I'd like to remind you that we are uh, going to be making uh, chassis components for electric vehicles and premium vehicles uh, from this plant. They are American, European, Japanese, and Korean manufacturers. Um, additionally, we have received significant new orders for this facility, uh, due to which we will have to very seriously now look at uh, a second phase of expansion to double our production capacity. Uh, in terms of defense, uh, the artillery gun ATAGS, which is co-developed with DRDO and which has completed all of its uh, trial and testing, I'm very proud to say, will be used on 15th August uh, as a part of the 21 gun salute at the Red Fort. In terms of e-mobility, we are seeing strong traction in terms of uh, developing products and business with customers for commercial vehicles, uh, especially for Indian markets. Uh, the company we have invested in Top Motors has already started deliveries of their bikes and deliveries of their electric powertrains for uh, three wheelers. Uh, we have had a comprehensive uh, strategy review in uh, creating the roadmap for 2026 and 2030. And we will share this, including the organizational aspects, 
uh, during a uh, analyst day, which we will host post Q2 to give more granularity and give more visibility and a roadmap. But I think we have some exciting plans and good growth opportunities. Uh, every vertical, whether it's the commercial vehicle vertical, passenger cars, e-mobility, defense, aerospace, industrial, now including the industrial castings business, gives us a larger footprint, larger product portfolio, and much more addressable market space than what we had before. So we look forward to these uh, unfolding uh, positively uh, in, in, the, in the near future. Suffice to say, with the very varied uh, comments that you've made, growth prospects for the next few years, Amit, don't seem to be a challenge. The any challenge would be how much you limit yourself to. Yeah, obviously the challenges will be on execution and you know the organizational bandwidth, speed of execution, and any external factors. Because sure. I mean, you know, looking back one year ago. Who would have thought that uh, the matters in Europe would be where they are? Sure. Now, currently, things in the South China Sea is all seem to be calm or getting calmer. But you know, these are we are now dealing with a world which is on boil. Yeah. So one can't tell. But I think as far as an enterprise, we have done the best that we can and continue to strengthen and fortify our position, build stronger modes of technology customer satisfaction, customer intimacy, and financial strength.